Hello DuPont members and anybody else looking in. Welcome to this week's video which is about how to paint clothes for portrait with pattern. You can see here I've got a shirt on top of a box because I don't have a sitter and on the shirt is lots of um, big pattern with smaller areas as well. So today I'm going to be talking about how to lay your pattern how to look at your fold and your tonal values and also how to put detail in and a little bit of colour mixing. I'm working in acrylic today and I've prepared a board. This is over an old board so I just painted over a layer. I've used Titian Buff which is a very similar colour to what you see in the, in the pattern of the um, shirt here. So that's what we're going to start with. I'm going to draw it out first. I'm using a small graduate brush and then I'll be marking in some of the pattern, not the detail. And then I'll be starting with the, the colour. This is my palette. I've got Cadmium Red Deep, Ultramarine Blue, Yellow Ochre, Cadmium Yellow Deep and White, Titanium White. I might add some um, Hooker's Green Deep on to, into that if I need to go really dark in a shadow. Looking at the shirt today, I don't see many really dark shadows, so I'll see what I can do with this quite limited palette. So to start off, I'm going to draw out using a very small graduate flat brush. And now I've drawn it out, I'm just going to put in my uh, tonal values using the same colour that I've already mixed up. This is just so that I can um, judge how it will look in a three-dimensional way. And also it means that once I put these in, I don't have to think about my shadows too much. So I'm squinting at it, always helps. Um, there's a shadow into the pocket, one over there. And this area is a little bit darker than this area here. You've got a shadow that runs down there. And underneath here, it's a little bit darker. The pattern will also decide um, the form. So the pattern will curve around the fabric. So that will make it look more three-dimensional as well. Within here... There's a little bit more shadow because the light is blocked by this collar and down there shadow and in here. Now I'm not going to pay attention to every little shadow shape. I'm just going to block in the major shadows because you don't need to go into that much detail when you're drawing fabric, particularly in a portrait because in a portrait the emphasis is usually on the face and the hands and... Um, you don't really need to put too much detail into all the other areas. Little line down there. Quite dark in here. And there's a shadow down the side of there. And this is pretty dark down here. However, it goes a lot darker behind here. Like that, I'll actually put the box in. Otherwise, it um, will just be a hole. So I think that's probably all I need. Bit of shadow down there. Right, so now to start with the colour mixing. So predominantly, obviously, it's red. 
but also I would like to mark in the um, in tish and buff the shapes of the pattern and then what I'll do is I'll paint over any areas that are green or the darker red so I actually haven't got my tish and buff out this is slightly lighter than what's on the shirt so what I will do is probably add a bit of maybe a blue and a yellow ochre to tone it down a bit make it a little bit darker so to begin with, I need my red. Now, I chose Cadmium Red Deep because it's pretty near to the red. However, there's a little element of yellow in that red. Not enough to turn it orange. And I'm just deciding, I think I'll go with yellow ochre and see what I get. Because um, yellow ochre's cooler and I don't want to end up with an orange. So a bit of white into here. And because it's acrylic, I'm mixing a lot. So that it doesn't dry out because today is quite warm so when i'm looking at this red i'm going to mix a dark a medium and a light color so when i start blocking it in i'll be putting in the shadows and the highlights so looking at that it's close i think i need a little spot of blue into there have a look again close a little bit more blue maybe and i think that will do for the mid color you don't have to be exact i might add a bit more white actually because that's a little bit heavy for a mid color and i bunch it all together so it doesn't dry out so the next color will be uh, the dark color so i'll take the red again the yellow ochre and I think yellow ochre was the right choice because it's not going orange and then some blue and that gets me the dark red it's almost brown actually because I've got a little bit too much yellow ochre in it so I will put in some more red compare it that's very close again I might actually make a bit more of that. I keep adding a little bit of water to make it run more effectively or make it a little bit more pliable. A little bit more blue. And that will do for my dark colour. And for my light colour, again, the same mix, the red, a little bit of blue and just a bit more white in there and the yellow ochre. It's a fine line between turning it pink or orange. You just have to add enough of the light colour enough of the white to just slightly lighten it without turning it so if I check that out close but it needs more yellow ochre but I might not use my cadmium yellow deep because um, I think I'll get by with the yellow ochre check again it needs to be a little bit lighter I think it's still a bit dark the mid color is now looking very bright so I might add a bit of yellow ochre into that so that's too much a little bit of red and a bit more yellow ochre so i constantly compare my color with what i can see in front of me that is a little bit too light red compare a bit more red I think that will do so I'll gather that together and then I'm just going to look at my buff colour so take some of this I've got a little bit of red in it actually from my um, palette knife not to worry I will put a little bit of yellow ochre in Bit more yellow ochre 
Oops, that might be too much. It's a bit too yellow. And a spot of blue. Compare it. Mm, it's a bit too pink. This actually could be the darker version. That actually could be the shadow colour and I'll go in and mix a lighter colour. This is blue. Mm, too much on my palette knife of the dark colours. Mix it over here. It's a bit white I think. So I think that will do for now. I might um, use a few, when I'm using the paint, I might mix a few of these colours to make it a little bit darker. So I'm going to use a flat today. Um, I'm going to use this one, which is Pro Art. I can't remember what size it is um, because all the paint's coloured. It could be a size 6, I think. Uh, nope, can't see it. <laughs> Well, this is one of my favourite sizes actually. I'm using a flat because I want to get some nice angles and paint round lines. Um, so let's start. So blocking in, I'm going to go with my darkest red and I'm going to put it where I can see the shadows. Now that actually, when I put it on the, the board, is too red. So I'm going to add some more yellow ochre and a little bit of this blue. And that's darkened it and dulled it down a bit. So my shadow is under here. When you're looking at fabric like this, which has a very broad, big pattern, you want to look for the bigger shapes of colour, which is why I went for the, the Titian buff. Very often, if you've got a fabric that's got something like checks on it or stripes or a small pattern, what you a good idea is to just paint the whole fabric in the one colour and then just paint the pattern over the top. Shadow drops down there. And there is a little bit of reflected light. This is drying already. A bit of reflected light under the pocket. So I'll put that in. And then you've got the shadow runs up there. Like that. Now in the last four videos I was doing quite a lot of blending whereas with this I'm not going to be blending much because I think um, being slightly rough with the way you paint lends itself to the fabric. In a painting you might save all your detail for the focal point and paint everything else a little bit more roughly. So actually the bottom of the pocket's here, so I haven't left quite enough space, but I'm not going to let that bother me. As long as it looks like a shirt, it doesn't have to be exactly that shirt. So I'm going in a little bit deeper down here because there's quite a strong shadow. And within this area here, that's possibly too, too dark. And within the pocket, if I squint, this is in shadow. This is a lovely way of working because it's like a jigsaw puzzle. Once you put in all the shapes of colour, it suddenly starts to come out of the page. So under here, there is reflected light again. So I'll just put that in. I have to, have to add some more water to my paint. I don't want it to be too thin because acrylic can look thin. But on the other hand, if it's too thick, you can't use it very easily. There's a shadow runs down here as well. But again, I can see a little bit of reflected light going down here. So maybe go a little bit lighter in there and maybe down here and in this area here it's light so that's the edge of the pocket 
and the pocket wrinkles above so I can start to look at little details like that and put them in as I paint a bit more dark colour just here and that area of light goes down here it's actually a little bit lighter than my lightest colour so I will rectify that a bit more dark in there so going over to this it's quite light so actually I'll take some of this very pale colour and bring it down I'm actually going to paint this all red I think and ignore the pattern for now um, and then I'll start to put in the Titian collar, Titian buff collar. So then it goes a little bit darker within here because you've got the shape of the box. You can see this, this um, fabric is quite sheer. You can see through it. There's that shadow there. And under the collar, it's quite deep shadow. So I'll put more blue in. dropping down to there where it goes light again and I want it to be light down here also there's an area of light in here and there's a little bit of almost blending here because there isn't a defining line And if I squint a little bit, I can see I'll take some light colour, put it into here. A bit more red. This is a lot paler over here. And then you've got a bit of a mid-dark colour going on in here. Like that. Now, if you do want to blend with acrylic, you have to really do it while the colours are wet, while the different tonal value, um, different um, tones of colour are still wet. So I'm just going to soften that, and that's it. Just a little touch, a little bit lighter into here, and then onto the side of the collar, very light, because the light is hitting it all the way. Apart from there's a little crease which I'll put in and this is why I chose a flat brush to work with because you can take a little bit of dark colour and just slice it in like that sideways. Going back to my light colour, that goes down here like that. And I don't mind if a little bit of the Titian buff comes through because um, it'll all be part of the pattern. It goes a little bit lighter down here and the pattern actually makes this area stand out. It's darker on the inside of the collar. And you've got a little seam there. But you also have a few little lines of the paler colour. So I want this to be a bit paler. So I'm going to put those in. And then going back to my dark colour just in the corner here. So just working with my mid, my light and my dark reds so within the collar it's quite dark in there good idea to squint at it again every so often so you can see exactly it where the light dark and mid tones are a bit dark in there and i'll take my mid tone and put that in there's a seam in there as well. And it's a little bit lighter over here. I 
So I've got a seam, so I'm just going to put that in with a little bit of the dark colour. And that runs up to there. And across there. And then you've got the label. Going down this side. Some mid-tone here. With a few little bits of a dark tone. So while it's wet, I'm going to work wet in wet. That drops down to there. And then mid-tone here. We have a little bit of light tone just down here. So I work quite thick with acrylic because acrylic is thinner than the water-based doors that I've been using previously and because of that I tend to put more on. So the light comes down to there and comes round. Bit more light up there. And it's quite light over the whole top here. But then you've got the side of the collar, which is a lot darker over on this side. I'm thinking it needs a little bit more yellow in my colouring as well. It's funny how, um, because I'm working with daylight, the light changes the colour constantly. And so you just have to um, think about what you're going to do with your colour and just stick with it. I wonder if that should be a little bit bigger. I'll make it bigger anyway so it balances with that side. So under the colour here, you have a very, very dark tonal value. So I'm going to take, as I'm running out, a little bit of water. Some more red and I'm going to go under this area of collar here all the way down and then it eases up and just goes to the normal dark color that I've got and within here is a little bit lighter And then you've got a little bit of depth of colour there. Going down to the button, which is in shadow. And then there's a little bit of dark within there. So I'm going to go to my mid-tone and put that on. Soften the edge. Wet in wet. And that is a slight fold there. And I think it goes a little bit lighter just here. And then you've got the curve of the fabric. So you've got a darker shadow going down the side here and into this area there. And then this is mostly pattern, but I'll just go over it anyway with some red. And I'm going to put some more dark just over here. So behind this, it's even darker. So coming up to the collar. I'm going to put that in as very dark and then I can see it's a bit hidden behind my palette but I think I can see it goes a bit lighter like that. So I'm starting to get a little bit of form, a little bit of three-dimensional feel to it. I'm thinking that I'm going to have to make my highlights a little bit lighter. Let's paint that in. And then down here, if I squint at it, I can see there is 
a shadow that runs down here. Now that will be behind the pattern. I'm just going to mark that in. And then it goes lighter here. So I'm going to add a little bit of yellow ochre into my pale colour and a little bit of white just to lighten it a fraction because my highlights are a little bit too dark, I think. Put a bit more yellow in. Now, because I'm working thick, um, the it should all still be a little bit wet. So I can go over it and... Um, it will still blend in areas. So I'm making um, adjustments tonally before I start the pattern. Um, let's see now down here, it's a little bit lighter. And it goes round there. So it's very light here. And also within here, it's lighter. And on the pocket, a fraction lighter. The top of the pocket, where you've got a little bit of a wrinkle, is much lighter. So I'll probably do that using um, a finer brush. This light area goes into here. And what's happening is the edge of my paint is dragging because the paint that I'm painting over is dry. So I'm just going to take some mid-colour and work next to it and that will soften it so around the neck here there's an awful lot of pattern actually so i'm just going to go into that a little bit with the red and then the pattern will sort that out it's a bit lighter here as well Now, sometimes when you're doing, if you're doing something like stripes and the you're doing maybe um, a white fabric with blue stripes on and the white fabric, um, you might be painting first and then painting the stripes over the top. You want to exaggerate your shadows a little bit because it's quite amazing when you put your pattern on, the shadows disappear and it looks flat. So I always exaggerate my shadows. Um, this goes dark under here. I'm working a too thin. It's starting to go flat, the paint. So I'm working a bit thicker again, taking bigger amounts of paint to put on. And then this sleeve drops down here and comes over. So there's a pale area within here. And if I look at this, sometimes it's very easy to lose yourself with what you're trying to do. There's a crease that comes down and that's a bit of a mid-tone. I'm going to have to add a bit of water to my paint as I go because it is drying out. But I don't want it to be too runny and thick. Then there's a shadow within there. So I just put that shadow in. And I think that will do for that section. It's lighter along here. And then you've got the curve of the fabric so it drops down into a shadow there so behind here is your box um, I'm not going to bother doing all of it I'm going to concentrate on this area here I'm just going to put in a little bit of this cough which is quite pale so nice and thick paint pattern um, emphasizes here how much it comes out. I actually think I've painted my box red. So I'm going to mix a quick box color with yellow ochre, ultramarine blue and a spot of red. 
and I'm going to put in my box which is in there that's not dark enough so I'll take some blue and some red and a little bit of the yellow ochre maybe a little bit of cadmium yellow there I did use it after all and just drop that in there okay bit of shadow here oops yeah I um, should have washed my brush <laughs> because I'm running out of colour I'm going a bit thin and what happens is the surface of the paint loses its um, the shine and that is a little bit darker in there And then you've got quite a lot of light on this here. Put some more yellow ochre in and some white. And even though I mix quite a bit of colour, I'm finding that I am I haven't got sufficient to get me through. So a little bit on here of the light and then that goes darker, just got enough. You have a few shadow lines going into the cough and then you have um, a little bit of dark here because it's slightly folded over but the edge of the cuff is quite pale so I'll just put that in And I think that will do. I'm going to put some pale, pale line just along here. And I'm also going to go in and put this paler line along here. Like that. And a little bit paler into here. So I'm adjusting my tonal values before I start to put the pattern on. Mm, yeah. And I think this might need to be a bit paler. So I'm going over and over what I've done before, building up the paint so you get a nice rich colour. And I think that will do. I still feel it should be lighter on this side, actually. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to look at pattern. But because I mixed that box colour, I'm going to use a little bit of that to put my box in. So red and yellow ochre together a little bit of blue will probably make that box color no not at all change it a bit more yellow ochre a bit more blue that might be a bit better yeah just put that in so we can see what's going on it makes it a little bit neater So I use my brush in lots of different ways. Is it sideways and uh, flat on? 
I turn it round if there's more paint on the other side of the brush. Let's make that a little bit darker. Just so I get a bit of shadow going on. There. That's the box. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to the buff um, colour and I'm going to start painting my pattern. Now I've um, put a little bit of red into my dark buff colour but I'm actually going to make that a bit darker. So when I put my pattern into the shadows it will look right. So I'm going to use a smaller brush now which is my graduate. I'm going to be looking very carefully at the colours within the shadows, so down here, it goes up to here, and then over there, and then you've got a nice crease onto the bottom where the pattern stops. It's my first bit of pattern. I think it needs a bit more yellow ochre in that actually. Put a bit of darker back in that. And where the light hits it, I'm just going to put some paler colour. So it's following the shadows. And within here, it's pretty much all this colour. Now, um, there's another little bit of colour, of the same colour underneath there, but it's a lot darker, so I'm just going to take a little bit of blue and a hint of red and a little bit of yellow ochre and put that in as a shadow colour and then just add a bit of the dark there, like that. And then um, underneath here, there is some, that's gone very grey, I'll put more yellow ochre in that. Just a little bit. My paint's becoming too dry again. I'll loosen it up a bit. You've got a bit of a curve there. And then it goes up on the dark side, but you do have... A little bit of highlight just here. I'll put that in afterwards actually. You've got a button on the underneath of here, so I'll just pop that in. And again, my paint is a bit too dry. I'll just reshape that button a little bit with a dot of dark there and there. One thing that sometimes people do if they're not that experienced with acrylics is try to blend it using water and it doesn't work because what it does is it weakens the paint in certain areas and you end up with a patchy effect and it just drags it around. So really what you want to try and do is um, blend when it's um, wet next to wet. So going on to the underneath here, it's very dark, but there is a flower shape in there. And I'm not, as I say, trying to follow the pattern too closely. Otherwise, I'll be here for hours and I'm very impatient when I'm painting. So there's a suggestion of flower in there. And leaves. Within there. They will be green eventually. And there's a really nice blue flower going on here. I'm going to leave the blue flower because the... Um, it's a different pale colour to this this colour, so I'm going to mix a pale blue for that, but that will come later. In the meantime, I think I'm going to use my palette knife with a bit of water to try and wake this up a bit. No, it's just peeling off. That's because I mixed it quite a while ago. This is a little bit better off, I think, the pale stuff. No, it's not. This is the downside of acrylic. 
So again, looking at where my pattern is, there is, now that's much better because I've got more paint and I'm using it more thickly. There's a bit of a leaf that goes down there. And then you've got a little bit of pattern down here which I think should be lighter because the light's hitting it a bit more there. That's actually too pale. But I'll go between the two down here and then a leaf that goes off there. And I'm going to re-emphasize this a bit and also a little bit over here. Nice. So over on the top here, you've got this buff colour again in a couple of leaves. So I'll put those in and obviously I'm going a lot lighter. And then I will put the green on afterwards. Ending up the same colour as the background. The colour over here also is light because I've got the background the same colour as the buff I'm actually going to leave that line of red although from where I'm sitting you can't actually see a line of red and within here you've got that blue so within the collar there's a leaf that runs under there and another little leaf there and then it goes a lot darker within here. And you've got various shapes going on there, which I'm just going to suggest pattern. Moving down to here, there is a line that runs down to a couple of leaves here. So what I'm going to do is um, check where my pocket is that's my fold and the first leaf goes here again i'm drying up because of the heat it's actually still wet there with the red but i don't mind that because it's uh it's dark anyway so it's just um making the leaf a bit darker and then i've got another leaf that goes across there like that and that line then goes from the leaves to the to that fold like that hmm. so I can see behind this dark red pattern there is a little bit of this color in there and then you've got these two flowers which I'm just going to put in using this colour. It's actually a bit lighter. And then I'll paint the darker colour over the top of it. And you've got another flower just there. You've got a leaf that comes up here. And nothing here. Within the pocket, there is a leaf, which is nice. So I'll put that in. And there is a little bit of a lighter red within that pocket. I am starting to lose my highlights a bit. I'm wondering about mixing a bit of red, maybe a bit of the cadmium yellow and a bit of white. That's quite nice actually. So I'm going to put that on the top of the pocket and a bit more red in it because within here there's a little bit of reflected light going on. And this also is a little bit brighter than what I've got. And then go over next to it to soften it. 
so this is the sort of adjustments I would make as I go the as I say the the red is brighter within here and a little bit lighter that's actually too much yellow let's get rid of that although actually it looks quite nice so and over on this side again of the pocket I think it needs to be paler there so you can see it's becoming a little bit more three three dimensional and a little bit of the dark what's left of it just around the pocket there this is all I'm going to do I think of the buff collar you can see how it's slowly building I'm going to start to work on the blue collar and then I'm going to put green over my buff collar at the same time I'm going to neaten and alter I'm going to take that a little bit higher up take that over to that And so for the blue, I'm thinking that it's a bit of a turquoise. So I'm thinking of using a viridian with um, some ultramarine and we'll see what we get. So I will mix some of that up. Right, I've mixed my turquoise. I had to use phthalo green because I didn't have any um, vermilion. No, Viridian, sorry. And um, it worked quite well. So um, phthalo green is very similar to Viridian but it's slightly more blue, slightly duller. So squinting again, I'm going to look at my, oh, that's very pale, my shape of my flower. So now I'm going to mix my green. I'm going to take some ultramarine. So I want an olive green, so I'm just going to put some cadmium yellow deep. Now I normally don't mix my greens, however, there's so little green on this that I'm just going to use a blue and a yellow. So hold it against it. That's reasonably close. I'll put a bit of red in, pull it down a bit. There are a few greens going on. There's a paler version of this green that I'm just mixing. A bit more yellow in there. I think the yellow ochre. So have a look, compare. Yes, that's very close. So I'm just going to put a bit of water into that. And I'm going to change this into green.
so I'm doing a few little adjustments as I go on the collar to bring things out and take things a little bit back there's quite a strong highlight over here that I think is quite important so yellow into red and some white a bit more red like that maybe a bit more yellow in that and a little bit pale just there and you can see it's starting to get the faults are starting to come out a bit more so even when I'm putting the pattern on I'm still adjusting a brighter red in there I think I made that a bit too dark and within there and so the colors building up I'm putting more and more layers on and it's starting to come together so I'm just looking at this area around the neck because it's a bit confused there is another crease of pattern that goes in there and that goes up to there like that and that should curve down and then there is a bit of a highlight on this here it just catches the light so I'm just going to put a little bit of light in there like that And there is a flower here. Oh, I've already put that there, so that's okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this dark red. It's a purple red. So taking my what's left of my cadmium red deep and the ultramarine blue and comparing notes. It is quite dark, that colour within there. A little bit of water. So this is my darkest colour, which will go, there's a little bit of it in here. I think that's probably too dark actually for elsewhere. Put a bit more red in it. And then there's a lighter version, but I'm just going to have to put some uh, cadmium red deep out, which is over here. And then what I'm going to do is a little bit of glazing. Take my red and white oh no put green in that's no good but a little bit of blue this is not going to be perfect because really for the color i'm trying to mix which is a, a pinky purple i think i want um, a magenta which i don't have so i'm just going to go with the colour that I've got, I think a lot whiter. Yeah, it's not ideal, but it will have to do. Just another flower just there, and There's a magenta line that goes up here. It's a bit too strong. And then one that goes up here. So I'm starting to work more details now. A little bit of purple into there. A little bit of that darker purple within there. The middle of the flower. And there is another flower sort of hidden down here, so I might put a little bit of that in. Although what I think that does is actually I think I'll use the collar a little bit. So I'm going to take some of this dark red and just go over that and under here just to get my collar back. And 
and going over here there is a little bit of this dark color just within here and there's a little bit more of a shadow line just here which I'm going to put in I'm going to mix a bit of a grey just put some red into it it's a warm grey and put a little bit more into there and taking my lighter red I'm going to neaten this up like that and also put a little bit more of a highlight just within there a bit of a dark grey blue going on as well in some areas of the blue flowers this is my darker colour in there one there and a little one just there I'm just doing a bit of neatening as well. I need to take my um, purpley magenta colour and go over this just to allow a little bit of the pale colour to show. And also down just here and there. What I haven't done is done the green stems from these flowers. In fact, they're actually quite dark. So I'll take that, I'm not that dark, down there, down there, and we'll have another one. Now what happens here is this has ended up a little bit confused. It doesn't look as if there's a crease there, and there is. So I'm just going to go a little bit darker into there. and a little bit darker into here and then I need to use a bit of a rigger to get this pocket shape but I'm going to highlight a few bits first because I think my highlights aren't quite strong enough so I'll put yellow into my red colour, my palest red colour down here more of that white, bit more red. Yeah, that's lighter. Bit more there. And especially on the collar. Take some of that green. all drying up again <laughs> so then I can work my real details and really focus on the smaller areas and just slightly darker and slightly lighter add bits of um, pattern as I go is a nice seam that runs along here which I'm just tapping in to suggest stitching and that actually goes down to this point here where it runs down there you also have stitching along the end of the collar Like that and I'm going to put a pale line along here just to neaten up that collar and maybe a bit of a pale line just along here so the collar comes forward a bit 
like that we're going a little bit darker under the collar like that and it comes forward so within here actually I'm just going to put in a flower that and change that green a little bit and you've got this pale color this pale magenta -y pink color also going on in this flower here it does take some patience to do a pattern in this much detail it's also worth looking at other artists um, to see how they do pattern because some will spend hours doing detail and others can't be bothered and will just do a bit of, um, you know, suggestive paint brushwork and not spend too long on it. in that went a little bit too pink then and over here you do have a little line of pale colour along the edge of the collar and also within there And then I'll put some over there. And now I'm going to do a little bit of glazing. I'm using um, Krilla Glaze Medium. Um, I'm not sure if this is gloss or matte. I think this is gloss. Um, as you can see, it's very old. So, so I've got some over here at the bottom of my palette. And oops, I'm going to um, do a little bit of a dark color and glaze it over so i take my dark color i take some glaze medium it's rather stiff because it is old and blue too much blue i'm gonna add a bit of water because that is very stiff i have to go down to the bottom here that's better and I can start to glaze into my shadows a bit more just to emphasize um, darker areas like that and if I decide to put any slight creases in then I can do that with the glaze medium it's quite a subtle thing but it does work and I usually do this at the end a little bit in there so what you can do is if you're doing a pattern you can take some of the pattern color like for instance that green in there use a bit of the glaze medium in your dark green and just glaze over a little bit to give yourself a bit more shadow excuse me getting a little bit of tissue so i'm going to take you can do whole areas so if this area for instance is in shadow you can take your meat glaze medium and just do the whole area you will get a purple tint on your pattern though, so you do have to be a bit careful. And that's got a little bit of white in it, which is going to make it translucent instead of transparent. And just go into your areas with a little bit of this. To darken what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a button on 
and I'm going to do a little bit of highlighting of the pocket and the collar and I'll use a rigger for that so I'll just get my rigger I have my rigger and using the palest collar putting quite a lot of water into it maybe a little bit more yellow a bit more white just to get it that little bit lighter and then I can just run a line along the edge of the collar maybe a little bit lighter like that and also on the edge of the pocket that actually runs into the fold I'll take it round there like that soften the edge with my finger and possibly I'll run a little bit of a highlight down here a little bit too pale so what I'll do is I'll take some of the darker colour and just go over that a little bit like that I think also that paler colour does follow the pocket round like that. You can also use the rigger to do your um, decorative bits on your pattern as well. So for instance, if you want to neaten up something like this, just use your rigger. And if you want to get finer detail on your pattern, the rigger is good for that too. I'm going to go um, pale here because what happens is you do get the edge of the fabric curving round and it goes up there like that. just want to tweak just around the um, top here because it doesn't look right so I'll take a brighter red and just go in there like that and then use my darker colour just to put a shadow behind that like that and then a little bit of my green to suggest leaf now I'm going to put a button in and it's quite a shiny button so I want a bit of contrast so the button actually goes here And there is a darker button just underneath the collar here. And then I will have to redraw that pale line. Like that. So within this button there is a little bit of shadow going over this way oops I've lost my circle oh it's not very good well, I'll have to put that back in there's a shadow around the button so what I might do is use my rigger and just go in with the dark red 
and just redraw the shape. Just a bit more water. highlights and then the button holes like that just neaten it up a little bit and the one that's hidden I'll just put the suggestion of a buttonhole with a hole there. And that's it. And so that basically is how you build up pattern. I would still tweak this. Um, lighten areas and darken areas. I think there's a little bit more light involved in there a bit too light so i'll just dab it with my finger but as i've always said when you're painting anything you start with the larger areas of tonal value and color working your way into the detail at the end So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you have a go and I look forward to seeing you next week. Um, we're going to have a change of theme. We're going to be going into collage and I'm very much looking forward to that. So have a good week. Bye.